tidal currents also strongly influence the redistribution of sediments from deltas. And the Brahmaputra River drains off the Tibetan Plateau and through here. It has so much sediment that it's a, a braided river. And then the Ganges River uh, drains the foothills of the Himalayas and part of the Indian um, subcontinent and comes down here. And they, they join to build this very, very significant uh, delta that's sort of squeezed in this area uh, right in here. So the tides in this area are very high and they're what give this delta its distinctive shape. So we can zoom in and let's zoom into the area first where the rivers flow into uh, the Indian Ocean. So the main river flows are coming down in through here and again this color change is the change in imagery in Google Earth and is an artifact of their process. Um, one of the things that's distinctive about the tidal influenced um, rivers is that there are a huge number of islands. So the river is flowing out and at times the tide's flowing out so you end up with a very very large uh, flow, in this case to the south and offshore, it causes a lot of erosion. When the tide turns, it acts against the river flow, and so in this area here, it'll slow the river flow down, but it's such a big river, it may not actually entirely uh, stop the flow. But that flow going back and forth in these channels shapes uh, these islands. So we can zoom in to an area further to the west where the tides really dominate the channels. So one of the, th the characteristics here is there are these channels at all different scales from large to small. And as the tide flows in, the water level goes up throughout this whole area and it's fed into even these very, very thin channels into these, these marshy wetlands. And then when the tide comes out again, that water will flow uh, back out of the marshes and down into larger and larger channels and, and back into the Indian Ocean. So that flow back and forth um, creates the characteristic deposits of tidal flows, such as the herringbone cross stratification. Um, and then when the tides are um, high or low, you can get the mud drapes and of course reactivation surfaces. So let's let's zoom in to this this coastline here. And one of the things that's that's happening along this coastline is these these peninsulas of vegetation are uh, getting eroded. And so the tide the tide comes in and then it's flowing out and they're actually little trails of sediment coming off the tips of these peninsulas that represent the, the sediment that's getting eroded. And we know that the tide is flowing out because these trains of sediment are flowing to the south to the, in the direction of the uh, Indian Ocean. So if we take a look at this again, one of the, one of the characteristics of these um, tidal um, deltas is the abundance of uh, islands and uh, the geometry of the channels which show that flow going back and forth and the sedimentary structures within them. Okay. So let's, let's take a look at a smaller uh, river. Let's go to um, Papua New Guinea. Um, and if we look along this coastline here, Again, it has, it's strongly influenced by tides. And we're going to start by looking at uh, the Fly River, which is shown right here. Uh, it's much smaller, but it has the characteristic islands um, that are shaped by the flow going in and out of uh, the river mouth. And it is uh, building out into the, the standing water here. The, the islands are projecting out into the water 
uh, which makes it a delta. Now we're going to go look a little to the northeast, though, um, for more detail, because there's a channel there that really shows a little bit about how irregular the tidal flows um, and the, the, the bottoms of these channels can be. So this is a tidal area. I'm not sure whether it's a delta or not, but it's, but it's very highly shaped by tides. And you can see the red color here, which is probably um, uh, some sort of iron oxides, um, are, are likely showing areas where the flow is currently very low. It looks like suspended sediment. You can also see these, these linear features uh, within the channel that likely represent uh, tidal bars from the flow going up and down um, in those channels. Okay, so if we sort of summarize the features of tide-influenced deltas, they have the flow going back and forth, which creates elongate islands, and they'll really, in terms of the sedimentary structures, they'll, they'll show those characteristics of uh, tidal flows. Thanks for watching.